Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. This is the Christmas Day edition of the podcast. That's why the intro music was from the Charlie Brown Christmas. Lawmakers in Washington were hard at work earlier this week passing a whole bucket load of gifts this holiday season. Governments around the world are grappling with the economic impact of the pandemic. And the last financial aid spending was passed on March 27, just a couple of weeks into the pandemic. Legislative gridlock resulted in nearly nine months to the day of time between the two bills, and back in March, the expectation was that the economic impact, while deep, would only last a few weeks. Many of those provisions had a horizon of only a few weeks. Paycheck Protection Program was only designed to provide 12 weeks of financial assistance. Now, nearly nine months later, the businesses that are still left standing are hoping they'll survive this next wave. So government's handing out money, but it's not a level playing field. Money's being printed and handed out like candy to a myriad of special interest groups. Every time there's an appropriation of funds, the various special interest groups advance their pet project into the legislation. The results are evident in the latest $900 billion spending bill. If you read the 5,593-page document, you'll find that there are all kinds of holiday gifts buried in those pages. And let's be clear, this bill was sold as a stimulus bill to help a population hemorrhaging from the economic damage of the pandemic. So you might hope there's $248 billion being allocated to a second phase of the Paycheck Protection Program. This second phase will allow you to get two and a half months of payroll in the form of a forgivable loan, as long as 60% of the money is spent on salaries. You need to have a reduction of 25% in revenue compared with the comparable quarter in 2019 in order to qualify. And if you're in the food or accommodation business and you've been particularly hard hit, you might be eligible for three and a half months of payroll in the form of a forgivable loan. This is directly in line with what we would expect this legislation to be all about. So needless to say, I was surprised to see $85,505,000 earmarked for Cambodia to strengthen regional security and stability, particularly regarding territorial disputes in the South China Sea and the enforcement of international sanctions against North Korea. It's also to assert its sovereignty against interference from the People's Republic of China. It's also to seize violence and harassment against civil society and political opposition in Cambodia. Under the banner of international narcotics and law enforcement, there's a provision for $134,950,000 to four states in Burma. These funds are not actually for international narcotics control and law enforcement. They're available for programs to promote ethnic and religious tolerance and to combat gender-based violence in four states in Burma. Why they've exactly singled out ethnic and religious tolerance in four states and not all 14 states in Burma under the banner of narcotics control in a COVID-19 assistance bill is a little confusing to me. What bureaucrat could possibly come up with something so absurd? The average citizen who's out of a job gets $600, but a bunch of corrupt generals in Burma get to rake in $135 million in U.S. taxpayer funds under the guise of ethnic and religious tolerance. Now, I have no problem with the idea that spending money there is a good idea, but just not under the banner of a coronavirus aid bill. But heck, what do I know about coronaviruses? Maybe there's a link somewhere and I'm just not seeing it. On page 1,591 of this massive document, there's $700 million for Sudan. That's one of about 35 pages in this bill dedicated to funding for Sudan. On page 1,498, there's $33 million in the spending bill for democracy programs in Venezuela. There's $4 billion available in loans to the country of Jordan under the Arms Export Control Act for Jordan to buy military hardware, presumably from U.S. suppliers. There's also $150 million to Jordan for enhanced border security. On page 1,436, there's $125 million in funding for Egypt, of which $40 million is for higher education, including a minimum of $15 million in scholarships for Egyptian students with high financial need to attend not-for-profit institutions of higher education in Egypt that are accredited by regional accreditation agencies recognized by the U.S. Department of Education. Are you following this? Another $45 million, this is on page 1,491, was awarded to key government officials in Central America, places like El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala, in order to combat corruption. Boy, you can't make this stuff up. They're giving money to corrupt officials to fund anti-corruption programs. It's brilliant. We have $10 million on page 1,486 going to the government of Pakistan specifically for gender studies programs. You see, the authors of this bill are pretty crafty. By bundling all kinds of unrelated spending under an emergency spending bill, it's virtually impossible for lawmakers to vote against those provisions. 
that have nothing to do with the main core of the intent for the spending. And the fact is there are dozens and dozens of these types of spendings buried within the pages of this legislation. And it's taken nine months of a legislative gridlock. And here we are again on Christmas Day, still with legislative gridlock and a complete impasse on moving legislation forward. On this Christmas Day, I hope you have a wonderful day. Spend it with your family, staying safe, and you're able to stay focused on the most important things in life. Have an awesome remainder of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.